So episode 23 of Fruits Baskets dropped and my god, that was one of my favourite episodes of all time. After weeks and weeks of more serious topics that didn't really emphasise comedy as much, this episode went full on fever dream, with the most unfaithful adaptation of Cinderella of all time, and I was all here for it. It was honestly such a bizarre episode in all the right ways, and I felt as if I was like Hero, sitting in the audience completely shell-shocked by what I was seeing. Everything about the play fired on all cylinders. Hanajima produced one of the most unenthusiastic portrayals of Cinderella of all time, focusing almost entirely on eating and even cooking food on stage. Kyo and Uwatani basically had a non-stop screaming match on stage. Yuki had his funniest character moment of all time as he appeared from underneath the stage and freaked out Kyo. The script and character interactions made no sense, and to top it off, despite everybody else's scripts being changed to suit their character, the narrator acted as if nothing had changed at all. I'm a sucker for absurd humour, so this sequence hit all the right notes for me. And then, at the end of the play, we finally got some more Kyo and Toru moments. Hanajima asks if Kyo's content to be locked away in the prince's castle all alone until he dies, an obvious reference to his upcoming stint in the cat house, and Kyo replies that it doesn't matter and it won't hurt anybody. And then Toru has an outburst, they both get mega embarrassed, and then Yuki tells Kyo he has to make his wishes come true with his own strength. So obviously this is laying out some story threads for season 3, and I really liked this. On one hand, the play was hilarious, but I really liked how it interweaved plot threads and character arcs into the comedy. Not just Kyo and Toru, but even Uatani's sadness as well. It would have been really easy to just go full comedy and cram that stuff in later, but I think the way it was done was really clever. And I think that ties into the episode's other main strength, was that it shared around the character moments and allowed different characters to shine a little more than in previous episodes, which focused more exclusively on Yuki's journey. We got to see Hiro trying to control his temper and become more of an adult, which ties into him trying to deserve Kisa's love, and also with him becoming a big brother in the future. We got to see Kyo revert to his more childlike self when he interacted with his dad, and his extreme disgust when Hanajima was flirting with him. We also got to see jealousy from both Hiro and Kisa, which was really refreshing. Usually you only see it from Hiro's perspective, where he's desperate for Kisa's attention. But when Haru jokes that Hiro likes Rin, it sets off Kisa a little bit, which I thought was a pretty endearing trait. And of course, no episode would be complete these days without the daily dose of Yuki character development. But this time, it wasn't really Yuki's development per se, but more Machi's and how that informs their relationship going forward. We see her getting picked on by some of Yuki's adoring fans who are angry that she said Yuki wasn't a prince. She goes on to call Yuki an airhead, and that he seems lonely despite his popularity. So it was already pretty clear that they were building up a romance between these two, but now it's beyond a shadow of a doubt. She's one of the few characters to actually see past Yuki's facade and see he isn't just some nice princely guy, but he has a lot of trauma and sadness in his life. For her to notice that despite hardly knowing him, bodes well for their future. Also, his reaction to being called an airhead was pretty priceless. And then we finished off the episode with a glorious Kyo and Toru moment. Probably the best one we've had in a while, and maybe the most significant one so far. It was only a tiny moment, but we get to see that Kyo and Toru have realised that they have feelings, but they're in extreme denial about it. And this says two things to me. One, expect a very, very slow burn for things to start to heat up. And two, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Romances on TV are never smooth sailing, so I fully expect everything to blow up in their faces before long. And this is a good thing, because otherwise we wouldn't really have a show to watch. But those are just my thoughts on the episode. What are yours? What was your favourite part of the episode? What plot threads are you most excited for? Let me know what you think.